Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me. You know, empathy, intuition, psychic abilities, and the clairsenses, just what are these? And how would you like to develop your own empathic and intuitive abilities? Well, we all have these gifts to some degree or another, and often they're just locked within, waiting for the right moment for them to come out. Now, how about exploring these areas and abilities within your life right here, right now? After all, is there a better time than right now? Hey, welcome to Creative Visions TV. I'm your host, Karen Dahlman. And today we have a guest, a really talented and gifted psychic medium joining us here on this show. Let me tell you a little bit about him before I bring him on. So as a young child, his psychic abilities emerged. And he started sensing and feeling like spirit was around him. He knew there was something much more than what meets the eye. Now, he worked with this throughout his life and fine-tuned it and honed it. And now, fast forward, he's an award-winning psychic TV medium. Now, he is also a presenter, a broadcaster, a columnist, a paranormal investigator for over 25 years. Now, our guest consults with national and international police departments on unsolved murder mysteries and missing victim cases. He continues to be a popular and sought after speaker, uh, especially guest medium at many paranormal ghost hunts. And he's working in the public, you guys. He does this full time. He helps people with his abilities and he does readings at psychic, spiritual, and paranormal events, including mind, body, spirit programs. His abilities also include physical mediumship, and trance mediumship. This is some cool stuff, you guys. And he teaches others to develop their spiritual awareness. Now, I had the privilege of meeting this gentleman and seeing him in action. I'm telling you, he is gifted. And this is why I wanted him on the show for you guys to meet him too. Now, all the way from across the pond, our guest is joining us here. So without further ado, let us welcome the talented and gifted psychic medium, Barry John, to the show. Welcome, Barry. Hi, Karen. How are you? I'm doing great, Barry. Thank you so much for joining us here. It was such a delight meeting you in the UK. You guys remember when I went to Sage Paracon in the UK? Well, this is one of the other speakers I met there, and he is just brilliant. Great speaker, and you guys, get this, really good with the Ouija board. <laughs> It's not done. This is good, guys. This is real, real life. We don't know what it's going to say. We just bring in the spirit and the guides, positive energy. Well, of course it is. It's, a, it's an angel board. W E A. <laughs> right? <laughs> Very true, yeah, we had a good game, didn't we, together? We did, you guys, they paired Barry and I together, um, and what we got to do was talk about the Ouija board and help people use it in the ghost investigation that we did that night in Coombe Abbey. You wanna talk about that a little bit, Barry? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, was, a, it was an honor working with you, because we didn't Thank know you. what we were gonna do until we got there. <laughs> right. um, and I think what was nice is when we first went into it, we both realized we had a similar view, a similar belief mm -hmm. of using the board. Um, and what was nice for people is that we showed them that actually using it wasn't to be fearful. It wasn't to be afraid of. It was a natural thing. Um, you know, once you lose those barriers, that's when activity starts happening. That's when the board started to work for me. You know, and people were getting questions, being able to ask questions, getting answers, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it was great. And I mean, we worked with probably, what, 40, 50 people at a time in our little group. Um, and it was special. You know, it was really, really special to be able to share our experiences and how we use them and to prove to people that actually you know what this is just another connection it's another tool it's no different to me doing mediumship or being a psychic you know passing on messages it's exactly the same it's a tool it's a way for the spirit world to connect um i always joke with people nowadays so i always say just think one day the spirit world might have a mobile phone <laughs> and suddenly what we'll end up with is all these unemployed mediums in the in the uh, in the job queue you know looking for jobs because <laughs> you know i think the spirit world are getting a lot more cleverer nowadays and they want to communicate direct with information 
um, and using things like the talking boards, the Ouija boards, psychic circles, whatever you want to call them, because remembering there's so many names being put on them that it is the same tool at the end of the day. Um, and I think what's really, really, really significant, and we both said this on the when we were working together, Karen, was you know there is nothing to be afraid of. It's a tool. It's a way of communicating. Mm -hmm. And the more that you use it with great respect, the more that you'll get provable information through it. Exactly. Yeah. So you can see he's saying a lot of things that I see here all the time. And so we really hit it off famously. And we sat down and used the board, too. And I have to tell you, I, I sit down with a lot of people and it doesn't work right away with most people. You guys know that I work really well with Rodney, my partner. But when I sat down with Barry, it worked mm -hmm. immediately. Spirit immediately came through and we were starting to get messages. And I have to say also, MJ Dixon, who put Sage Paracon on, I sat down with her and she's good at using this, this tool, too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all about having that belief in it, isn't it? Believe in mm -hmm. it. Believe it's going to work. You know, and I think the spirit world are very, very clever that when they detect a, almost like a, a negative element or something about, oh, it's not going to work, they'll pull away from it. And because we went into it, and I always remember we yeah. were sat outside, if you remember. Yes. Um, and I remember we just sat down and we thought, okay, what comes through, comes through. And instantly, as soon as we connected, yeah. The board started to answer us and talk to us. Yeah, and I wasn't surprised because we, you guys, I always talk to you guys about picking a partner and how that matters when you really mm -hmm. want to do this seriously because it's the energy. And I know we already connected, you know, doing the ghost hunt and our investigation and talking about the board and helping people use it during the event. Yeah. And then sitting down, it was just, it was that much easier. It was just like a continuation of that connection. Plus, we both come about it from a very practical, nonsensical approach. And so it was easy when we sat down. Now, do you want to show us some of the boards you brought today? Day. Yeah, yeah. Well, Love to see them. This is my, my own private one. Wow, so hopefully that. you can all see that. I mean, that comes, it has a, a glass top on it. It's very heavy. It's actually slate. So That's uh, you see how crazy. heavy it is. Um, and it has a lovely little slate um, pointer on it as well. But this is the one that I always use for private seances. I use this at my home. So if any groups come to my home, this is the one that we will use in here. Um, a couple of the others that I've got that I, um, I use mainly on events, really, and I sell these are ones like this one. Love. The, I love her work. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Very, yes. very nice. It comes with a, a little, little pointer as well. Um, and they work really, really well. You know, the great little boards to work with. And see, people love these because they look friendly. They, you know, I think <laughs> when, when they've got, you know, when they've got that real sort of, I don't want to say darkness to them, but when people think that they're not very nice, that's another one of mine as well, what I use quite a lot. I love, again, that's the same, uh, the same creator. Yeah, exactly the same, yeah. yeah, exactly the same. And what's nice is they come with the little verses on the back, you know, uh, please do not be alarmed. Please take my hand and follow me, which is exactly what we say in terms of the spirit world, you know. And these are ones that I use at events. And we have some great activity, in fact, the other day, I actually found my original, original Ouija board that I've had many, many years. Um, and the poor thing's literally hanging on by a thread now because it's been <laughs> folded so many times that, you know, it really does struggle to move now because it's took all the coating off the top. But as I say, these ones are ones that people use on events with me. The main one is the one that people will use if they come to my home or my house and we do a private seance for them. Or even if I go to people's houses because, you know... I, I, I have this huge passion of wanting people to experience mm. spiritual work. Um, and it's not just about me sat around a table going, I've got a message from your mum, I've got a message from your dad, I want to tell you this, I want to tell you that. It's about them physically being able to touch something and being able to get a message themselves. And yeah. if me being the medium can work with them to get mm. a message through the board, even yeah. better, even better. you know. And if, if the board's picking something up and I can... Um, emphasize on it if I'm picking something up and the board can agree with me absolutely fantastic you know I mean we've got we've got so many tools nowadays that we can use in order to contact the spirit world whichever way you wish to talk about it um, pendulums dowsers dowsing rods some of the things I'm going to show you in a few minutes because we're going to do a little bit of a workshop in a few minutes as well but you know I think it's so important that people remember go into it with an open mind Mm -hmm. Go into it with an open mind and think, actually, you know, it's going to work. We're going to make this work. Because the more you go into it in that mode, 
you'll come out of it feeling quite astonished or quite proud about what you've achieved. I, I so agree. And, and so, like, oh, do you ever work the board alone by yourself? No, not very often, okay. actually. No. Yeah, people write to me all the time because they don't have partners and they, they want to do it. And so we work, I try to help people use it themselves. I use it by myself. I prefer using it with a partner because I get such great verbose yeah. kind of responses. Yeah. Um, and I just have done that for, I did that for many, many years. But yeah, uh, but yeah you can use it by yourself too. And uh, let me show you my board I have. I don't know, a lot of people may not have seen this board before. It's my, the, the Archangel board. It was created by a psychologist named Dr. Yaffe Yair. And she sent this to me and I've used it. It's right back here, you guys. It folds in half. It's a, it's a nice board. And, and as Barry mentioned, you know, sometimes people want boards because they have a different feeling for them, like the angel boards and stuff. And so that's quite all right. You know, if you want to use a board, pick one that you're comfortable with. That's that's it. Bottom line. You guys know me. I'm mostly comfortable with the old, old Ouija's that were made by William Fold or Parker Brothers. And those are my favorite. You know, I love the old timey look of those. But um, I also love these two. So it, so really go out and pick the one you like. Now, when we were at Sage Paracon, I sat in your talk and your demonstration, actually, is what you did, Barry. It was such an incredible demonstration because we had people in the audience. He was helping to develop, like we're going to do here today, helping them develop their abilities, their intuition, their empathic abilities, their psychic abilities, etc. And people in the audience said, I no, I can't do this, I can't do this. Well, he brought those people up front. And you, let's just share this story because it was quite incredible <laughs> to see the results. <laughs> I think that what was more incredible that you actually got a message. <laughs> I did, you guys. He picked somebody from the audience that did not know me. It went up there and totally read for me. It was it was crazy because, um, well, dude, let's do you go ahead and explain a little bit because it's it's a fantastic yeah. experiment. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I love doing experiments on any event, and even when I'm doing a demonstration, very often we'll get people up to the front and get them to almost get the link for me. And then I'll expand on the link with them. But, you know... You Barry, let me ask you, what do you mean by link? I'll explain that <laughs> it, it, so we, everybody so here other, can understand that. Yeah, so in other words, what I do is I'd invite somebody up and say, right, where do you feel drawn to? Go to somebody you feel drawn to in the audience. And then they might go, right, okay, I'm drawn to the gentleman. Right, okay. Well, what, why are you drawn to him? Well, I just feel as though he's very sad at the moment or he needs a bit of comfort. Okay, why do you feel that? And then I start pumping them for information because... Mm. It's amazing what they start coming out with. And then I'll go, right, so give me a month, give me a date, give mm -hmm. me a name. And you start almost to build up what I do with the spirit world when I'm working. Because remember, it's a two-way conversation. You know, this isn't about the spirit world going, here's all the information. It's actually going to them, right, who have you got for me? What is the name? Is it a male or female? Where did they live? What did they look like? You know, and you have to do this to build up this link. So I, I love playing around on events. And the, the experiment that we did was basically using these, which is just ribbons, if you remember. Oh, and what yeah. I did was I got, I got a few people out of the audience to pick a ribbon, basically stand there and feel the energy of the ribbon, see how it feels, how does it feel to you, what does the colour mean to you? And also sometimes closing their eyes, because sometimes colour feels different to how it looks. So, you know, picking a colour at random, you know, I'm just going to pick one now, very, very, I'm going to pick this one because it's the one that's come to mind. So it's very much a brown colour. So I would always look at how people are holding it. Are they holding it taut? Are they wrapping it around the fingers? Are they trying to hide it or protect it in some way? And then I'd go, right, well, what does that mean to you? Well, brown to me is very earthy. It means somebody very grounded. It could mean things like muddy water, which can talk to me about people are, making things a little bit difficult around them. And I'm just throwing a few examples in here. But, you know, I think what is so important for me is watching what people do while they're holding it and looking at how, how they feel when they're holding it. Some people might get a colour and go, I don't want to hold that. Well, why don't you want to hold it? Well, it's the feeling what it gives to me. Well, what is it giving to you? It's no different to the board, remember, because, you know, a certain colour people might not like. Right. You know, there's, there's certain colours here straight away that, you know, if that was me, if I was picking a colour for somebody, there'd be certain colours that I would probably stay away from, and that's personal preference. So like that, that's, you know, it's a lovely, vibrant colour. Red means a lot of things. It could mean anger, it could mean love, it could mean emotion, you know, but it depends how you're holding it at the time and what the person's feeling. 
So one colour to one person might mean mm-hmm. something totally different to the other, such as me and you, for instance. Mm-hmm. And, and it, that's nothing wrong with that. That's just normal. And that's why it's so important when you're using any sort of tool in terms of psychic ability or mediumistic ability, you go with this gut feeling that you've got. Because it's really, really important that you go with how it feels at that moment in time. Um, and, and what was fascinating on, on that day when we did that little experiment, when you were sat in the audience, was we had probably six people up the front from memory. Each one of them picked a colour. They didn't know who they picked because, obviously, I made them turn round, if you remember. I gave all the colours out, collected them all in, and then they took the colours off of me. So it had been impossible for them to know unless they were watching me do it, and they weren't. But wasn't it interesting how the girl who got you, I remember she picked the colour, and she said, all I am is drawn to Karen straight away. I'm drawn (laughs) to Karen. And even I didn't remember it was yours. But every piece of information what she came out with for you, you, you were... It was spot on. Well, you guys, it was spot on. So what happened? He walked around and gave myself, I had like the yellow, which I, I love, a yellow yep. ribbon. And he gave, like like he said, six, eight ribbons. I forgot how many. And then the people that went up front, they mm. were up front already with their backs turned to us. So they couldn't see us yep. when he handed out the ribbons. Yep. And then and then I picked this, got this yellow one. And, and it right away, it brought up, it, it, yellow is one of my favorite colors. It's probably my second favorite. It's my mom's favorite color. And yeah. so I was thinking about my mom and I was just totally into it. And so the gal, wonderful gal, by the way, she picked it and she said, yeah, I'm immediately drawn to Karen. And then she goes and he starts asking her questions and he has this wonderful way. Barry has this great way of drawing <laughs> the information out in a very a comfortable way. And she, and she started answering his question. I mean, she was hesitant, you guys. She did not think she could do this. And then she said, I'm getting Karen and mother and May. And my mom was born in May. And I was thinking about my mother and her birthday and yellow. And it was like everything, you know, it wasn't like, well, this is going to happen in your life. It was just beginning of developing these abilities. And yeah. that's where it all starts, isn't it, Barry? You start beginning. Yeah. And she did that. And remember, remember, she'd done nothing before. Never! Nothing. She didn't believe she could do this. And as soon as she started communicating and talking, the information naturally started to flow. Yes. And, you know, I, 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 this is why it's so important. When you go to see a medium, you do not do this old philosophy where they used to say, don't talk to them, don't acknowledge them, don't right. tell them anything. Because the better that you communicate, the better the message will be. And, and it's exactly the same as using a board. But what was fascinating for her was that she'd never done it before. She didn't think she could do it. She was dreading it, to tell you the truth. But as soon as she let that barrier down, that yeah. information started to flow. And all I did, I, I, I have a way, I, whatever you call it, I have a way where I can almost tease people's information a little bit and go, right, well, what are you seeing? What are you sensing? What are you picking up now? Um, and that's sometimes what people need. They just need somebody just to push them a little bit. But it's a great experiment to do because, you know, we talk about psychic ability. We talk about psychic ability every day. Now, some of us, when we go to a supermarket, we might feel drawn to certain people. Mm-hmm. There might be some people that when they come close to us in a supermarket, we have to move away from. You know, there could be people who suddenly start coming, in, coming up to you in a supermarket and talking to you. But that's good because it shows that you're open to this ability. But, you know, remembering that, you know, the biggest part of what we do, I always call it, is personal responsibility, which is looking after us, which is looking at how things affect us, looking at how we feel around other people. And once we start getting into that energy and we know how things affect us and how certain people affect us, then on a day-to-day basis, we handle life very better or a lot better because, you know, it's so significant that we realize that some people will drain us, some people will be a battery to us, some people will give us energy, others will take it from us. You know, and this is all part of your psychic development, part of your first stages of awareness, looking at how your energy is affected. I think it's really, really important that when you're working with any sort of ability and we start developing people on a workshop level, that you have to concentrate on yourself. And sometimes that might mean letting go of things, letting go of your own emotions. It's very difficult for us all to grieve nowadays. And some people 
being honest, don't know how to grieve. Mm -hmm. But I think what's good and what's nice is that working with people such as me, we can help people almost release that barrier over time of, you know, maybe something happening in their life that they can't get over, maybe something happening in their life that they can't deal with anymore. And this is another lovely, lovely experiment that I use. These are some, some angel cards that we've got. Okay. Wonderful. And, they, okay. and they're really, really lovely cards. But, you know, again, at random, you know, just picking one at random. There you go, one that's fell out. So it's the card of listening, okay? So, nice. again, I always say to people, look at the depth of the card. Look at what's in that card. Look at the information, what it tells you. You know, that, to me, it's a very masculine energy. It's very domineering. It's almost like somebody's coming in very supportive over you. Somebody's coming in to almost guide you and guard you in a way, you know. Um, look at the colours. You know, it's very pale. It's very, to me, it's almost quite serene in terms of how it comes in. And then you've got this lovely little lady in the corner here who almost just pops her head into the corner as if to say, just letting you know I'm with you, just to let you know I'm around you, just to let you know I'm offering an element of support. And these are, these are such lovely cards. Anybody that's wanting to learn, you know, get some of these. These are called Healing with the Angels cards. Um, and they're lovely, lovely cards to work with. I only use these now for giving private readings when people want them mm -hmm. um, because they are such lovely cards. You know, they predict, really show nice pictures and training for people. They really give but, you a lot of imagery to read into. Is that what you're saying? Oh, totally. totally. Yeah. yeah, rich in you know, imagery. And yeah, and I always say it's about looking into the background. It's yes. not what, you know, the card's got a word on it, but look into the background, look at the detail, look at how it feels, you know, hold the card. How does it feel to you? And, you know, before you can start developing your mediumistic abilities, we have to develop that psychic level, which is what all this talks to you about. It's psychic, psychic, psychic. All that psychic talks about is how to um, link in, how to get energy working, how to get movement. And when I talk about linking in, I'm talking about linking in with the spirit world here. So are you, are you saying that you're suggesting that getting to know your feelings and not shying away from them, whether it's something you have to deal with that's, that's unresolved in the past or, or when you walk into a grocery store and you feel people's energies, is it being able to discern what's yours, what's not, and just being really clear with your feelings? Totally, totally. Okay. Because, you know, there'll be times when you maybe walk into somewhere like a restaurant and you'll feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. But is it, is it the building? Is it the people? Is it the situation? And that's what all this tells you about, you know, because we get you working with your own energy. We get you working with um, what affects you and what works better for you. So I think as soon as you've established this difference between you and the spirit world and, and us and the link, we're aware of how it is then. So How do you make that important. discernment, though? So let's say you walk into, you're in line at the post office, you're going to yeah. mail a package, and, you know, those lines can be long and boring, and you're standing there and you feel some heavy energy, and how do you know it's not you feeling that from a fight you had with a good yeah. friend the other day or the person in line in front of you? How do you learn to discern that? Because what we have to do, and this is, this is part of that real basic development stage, you know, that, that real awareness stage, because... When we go into any situation, if I'm going into a haunted building to do a ghost hunt, I'm going in there, and the first thing I do is I go in there and I go, right, how am I feeling today? You know, am I feeling okay today? Have I got any aches and pains? You know, is there something on my mind? And, and then I go, right, I'll acknowledge that. I know that that's mine. But then if I go further into the building and I start getting, I don't know, an element of choking, I start getting an element of being, you know, real suppressed by somebody, then I think, actually, you know what, that's not mine. That doesn't belong to me anymore. And that's what I have to look at, is that situation. And this is what awareness talks to us about, is it lets you establish what affects you and what is you to what mm -hmm. isn't you and is somebody else. So it's like taking a baseline reading of yourself before you start this work. Totally. So, okay. So if let's say somebody's practicing with the cards just at home by themselves, yeah. what, how, what do they do? How do they do that if they're not reading somebody? They're just, are they reading themselves? What do you recommend? Yeah, yeah. Now, now this is where when we talk about using the board on your own and things like that, because I, I, always, I always think it's very difficult when you're starting out, because if you're reading the cards, if I pick, um, I don't know, I'll pick the intention card. Okay. Sometimes... You could almost, when you're reading it yourself, you could almost make it read what you want it to read, okay? 
and that's what we have to be very mindful of. Yeah. Is that when, you're, when you've got somebody else reading it for you, they're actually getting what it does mean rather than you going, well, actually, you know, I want it to say this. And it's almost like you go into it with a, with a preempted idea, if you know what I mean. And you go, right, I want it to say this, so that's what I'm going to make it read for me. <laughs> and I think it's always very difficult when you're trying to read any cards or, or any sort of tool because when you're doing it yourself, you'll always make it fit what you want it to fit. Right. Okay. So for anybody at home, Try them, you know, get a pack of cards, go, right, actually, I'm going to shuffle them, I'm going to lay them out on the table, I'm going to pick three cards at random today, and see how they relate to you, and actually try it through the course of the day, and do it, do one in the morning, one at lunchtime, one in the evening, and think, actually, have I picked the same cards, do they all mean the same thing, or has mm. it changed through the course of the day? which is what will naturally happen, you know, in the morning we wake up, we're quite excited, we want things good to happen, Lunchtime, we try, we're starting to get a little bit sort of in the middle of the day. We want to get to the end of the day. And obviously in the <laughs> evening, we're getting very tired. So, you know, the energy changes with all of us, doesn't it? You know, it changes on a, an hourly basis with us. But, you know, going into it and picking a couple of cards at random and going, actually, this is what I think my day is going to be like. Absolutely brilliant. You know, it gives people that real... <sighs> It gives people that real urge to start the day. And this is what I find with a lot of my groups over here is they all do this. And they started doing it for one another as well. We have little pages on Facebook where somebody will pull a card for a certain person and go, I pulled you this one today. And then somebody will go, that really makes sense to me today. I understand that. And it almost gives you that, that positivity to start the day, I suppose I'd call it. So really, even starting with yourself picking a card a day or picking a few and not yeah. re necessarily reading what the cards are interpreted to mean, or you can, I'm like you, I read cards almost yeah. every day myself, and I yeah. read the imagery behind it, like you said, I read the yeah. full image. So yeah. that's one way, you guys, you can really develop yourself, your ability to it's sense and feel and pull things out. So when you start doing readings for people, you're going to have yeah. a lot more like a, what you say, a plethora of, yeah, of, a, yeah, of words you know, and emotions yeah and you know one of the things you've just said there you know which is what i always talk to people about when you buy any tool any cards whatever you buy don't read the book because the book <laughs> has been written by somebody else and it's somebody else's interpretation you know i so agree and i talk to people about this with dreams people always say what does my dream mean i said i can't tell you what you're dreaming but i can help you learn what it means based yes. on your own association with the imagery that comes up and that's what he's teaching here this is i gotta yep. tell you barry when i was an art therapist i did that for 10 years a psychotherapist art therapist this is how i did art therapy i didn't interpret people's drawings i helped them learn to understand yeah. what was coming out of the drawings by reading the rich and feeling the emotions from the, the imagery and what you're doing is just brilliant this is this is how i've learned to do this do you know i whenever i teach karen i teach people simply because you know, for me, the art of mediumship, being psychic, is simple. We make it complicated ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think if we go with our gut feelings, you know, with anything, you know, even colours, you know, ribbons, certain colours people will look at and go, no, that's not my colour. But then we could look at that and go, well, why isn't it your colour? Why, what does it relate to? What does it tell you about yourself? And, you know, this is exactly the same as the cards, you know. Don't look at the book, pick a card at random and just go with your gut feeling. How does it relate to your day? Even at the end of the day, pull a card and say, actually, is that, is that, is that give me a conclusion to my day? Nice. Very nice. So you guys practice with your, with your cards this way. If you aren't already doing it, just learn to read what intuitively feels right to you. I hear what Barry's saying. He's wanting us to get more in touch with our internal feelings and emotions yeah. and responses to that, as opposed to it's out here and I'm just going to read what the book says. That, that, make, that makes you distance from it. That makes you distance from your abilities. The board is much the same way, you guys. You've got to be, you've got to work with it through yourself and not the board that's doing it. It's yourself that's doing it. And that's what he's teaching us here. He's the one mm -hmm. that's really doing the work. You're doing the work, not the cards yeah totally and you know as we said it's what it means to you not to other people nice nice so w what other technique one or two that you can share with us that would help people also continue to develop being more sensitive to what we're talking about more sensitive to the energies like you felt spirit as a child i did too um yeah. and you you have you do readings for people is what you do for a living 
It did. But, but how do people like step forward when they're kind of like, uh, I don't really trust. I, I don't really believe that's what I'm getting. Oh, I'm making this like the board. Oh, I'm making this up. I'm I, it's mm. my subconscious or, I, I, you know, this can't be real. You know, that kind of thing. They that, don't want to trust themselves. Yeah, that is a really hard line, to be honest, because even I do that still now. We all do. Working. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I'm working an audience and sometimes I come off stage and I think, did I really say that? Was that really correct? And then somebody will come up to you afterwards and go, I understood totally what you were saying there. And you think, blimey, thank goodness for that. I'm really, I, I really understand now what I'm doing. Um, but I think we all have an element of doubt at times. And we, mm. it's there naturally, isn't it? Because we think, could that really be my mum? Could that really be a relative coming through? Is that really somebody watching over me at the moment in time? You know, and all I'm going to say to people is, go with your gut feeling. You know, if you know something, you know it. You know it. And, it's like when people come to me and I'll be giving them a really lovely reading, you know, and I don't know, it might be mum coming through and I'm giving them all this information, this proof. And then just before I end the reading, they'll go, well, if you tell me my mum's name, I'll believe you. And I go, right. but if I've given you all that information, surely that tells you that that's your mother. Right. Okay. This, this also, you guys, parallels with the Ouija board. They would say, if you, if that, if you're really speaking to who you're speaking to, or you're speaking, it's my grandmother or my deceased uh, cousin or whoever it is, you say, well, then, then I need to know its name. And then that, those specifics don't always, they may come through, but they don't always. But no. now, now, why, why is that? What, what is your response to that, Barry? Well, because my feeling is that you know, you have a good feeling, you know, it's that, it's not just about using the tool. You develop a link, don't you? I do anyway when I'm using anything. And I know if that's my mother. I know if that's somebody that is a friend of mine because I almost feel that relationship builds up between them. And I think, actually, this is very comfortable for me. I know who this is. And there might be key little elements that come in that say, you know, secret words. I remember I did a reading for a lady oh. earlier. I just kept saying, um, if that's my mum, ask my mum what the password was. And I'm thinking, I don't know what she's on about here. And all the mum kept saying to me was basically, tell her it's fruit, tell her it's fruit, tell her it's rhubarb. And, and, and in the end, the woman spoke to me and she says, you're absolutely right. She says, <laughs> it was actually bananas. You know, and, and I'm thinking, well, how do I know that? How would I know that? You know, I've got no idea because anybody's password could be anything. Really. Oh, yeah, right. Hence name, it could be your name. It could be, I don't know, the street name of your house. Um, you know, but when when things are coming out and people are saying things to you, you're thinking, I've just got to trust what they're saying. Um, and that's where, for me, I've got to the point now where I don't question it anymore and I just deliver it. And I think if it's meant to be said, it's meant to be said. You know, that's interesting. The guides that I work with on, on the board when I talk to them all the time, they always tell me, they said, I would say, I'm supposed to give somebody that message. And they yeah. say, well, who are you to judge what that person yeah. can or can't ha he, you know, handle? Yeah. And I would think, oh, we could sugarcoat it. And they're like, no, you have a responsibility to, when you do this work to bring forth exactly what's coming through. And so I'm hearing you say that. It said there's, there's, there's this authenticity with yourself yeah. when you trust your gut and to not hide it but to bring forth those messages so you guys when you start trusting yourself internally you know how you feel uh, even when you're upset when you're happy and you know which feelings are yours you walk into a room you know what feelings belong to you you start discerning all this and then you when you the messages come through you don't doubt them as much because you go oh i already do trust myself that i i know that's me that's not me or i do resonate within me i can tell that message really is from my deceased grandmother so it's that kind of thing i i believe you're talking about barry Totally, yeah, totally. It is. It's, it's, it's just recognizing ourselves and recognizing that energy. And once we've done that, then we start picking up on other spirit, other presence around us. You know, a little bit like what we did at Coombe Abbey. You know, we knew that there were certain characters in the room that, you know, weren't of our being. But, you know, information was coming through on the boards that we were using with people. And that's what's fascinating is when it starts connecting further afield. And we can use that energy to start asking questions, to start asking specific information. Um, you know, I love playing around with the spirit world. I love them. I love them playing games with us in a way because they'll always tease you with information, or they'll tease you about what you want to know. And I, I do think they have this real clever way about them, where they will almost drip feed you information very, very slowly. Um, I've said to people over the years, you know, they always say, oh, you know, can we have an hour's reading with you, a private sitting? And I'll always say you need no more than half an hour. 
And they go, why is that? And I say, because when I work, I work very quick. Mm. And a lot of people have very often said to me, it's almost like a machine gun going off in a way with me because the information <laughs> just, just literally falls out of my mouth. And then afterwards, they'll go, you know when you said this? And I'll go, no, I don't actually. Amazing. Because I don't class it as being my responsibility to remember. And at the end of the day, it's not my reading. Exactly. You're there you know, just to not... be the mouthpiece to allow it to come exactly. through. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally. You know, and I have people who come and see me, I don't know, probably six months, something like that, once every six months. And they'll say, oh, last time I come, can you remember? And I'll go, honestly, no, I can't. <laughs> you know, I don't remember when people have left my room, never mind six months later. Yeah, you're seeing thousands of people. I mean, you're seeing people all the time. You're, you're all working. The time. Yeah, so how would you remember all that? And it's best not to because you don't want to hold, carry all that energy and all the weight of all yeah. that as well. Yeah, you, you can't. I mean, I, I, did a, I did an event this weekend and I did, what did I do? 30 readings this weekend. Wow. Just in, just in one weekend on a Saturday and Sunday. There is no way. If, if you ask me, the first person that I saw, I can tell you now, I wouldn't be able to tell you if they were male or female. <laughs> well, it Honestly. starts to run into each other, and then it, uh, yeah, I can only imagine. It's like me yeah. doing five hours on the board. It's like after a while, it's like, <laughs> I got, that's why you guys, that's why I write, write everything down and record it for these yeah. reasons. This is so much information coming through. So I totally respect that. Yeah. Do you know, it's phenomenal, isn't it? Because I remember when I first started getting into the board, and all my friends were really fascinated because I could do the board. And they used to come around and we used to sit there for four and five hours oh, yeah. at a time, just talking on the board. And then, you know, people would leave. Then somebody else would come in and you'd go, right, OK. Um, and they were astonished by it, some of the info what used to come through. No different to things like table tipping and glass moving, glass divination, because it's all part of the same thing for me. You know, it's all part of proving life after death or that, you know, there's an element of somebody watching over us. And the thing I like about the board, and you may, you may feel this way too, is, is the tangibility of it. You can actually feel it, the movement of it, and the energies. And, and yeah. I, I appreciate that because when I get other kinds of information, it's not always as tangible. So that's one of the mm. things I think that draws me in and, and keeps me coming back yes. for more, is that it is very, very tangible. And, and now with these guys that I've been working with since 1994, the, the group that I still work with today, they're just so strong and I, and I can, you know, they're here, I can feel them right now. They're, they're like my group of guides that I always work with and um, just through that development, you know, using the board and developing myself as the instrument to bring them forth through the tool, it's like a lot of other kinds of abilities have, have really quickened for me in, in, in a sense of, mm really um i've developed because of, yeah. of using this tool have you, have you found that happening because uh, oh. you're, you're already gifted outside of it but using the tool has that brought anything else to the table for you and on this yeah. level oh gosh yeah i mean it opens up so many things for you when you it use does, the doesn't it? you know it's like it's this real avenue of, of working for me i just call it working with the spirit world because yeah. it's something that just gives me great comfort great relief you know when i've had a bit of a a shocking day you know and I can just sit there and I can sit for five minutes and go right I know you're there what's today taught me what was the lesson today from you you know um and sometimes they'll be very honest with you sometimes you know the spirit world aren't nicely nice they'll tell you off for something that you've done but you know you think right okay I won't do that again or I'll learn from that again mm. and this is what I think is so important that anything that we get or we acknowledge we learned from it with the board you know and from any tool you know whatever it is the ribbons the cards the mediumship whatever it is but you know all i'd like to see and i want to see is people develop their ability you know people really going out there and thinking how can we be, be better you know what can we do better what can we do to help people um mm. i always say you know part of being a medium for me is, is helping people move on in life in whatever way that is whether that be grieving whether that's solving a problem whether that's finding a person who's gone missing you know, and I think that's really, really important for us as a job because it's not about just sat behind a table reading a set of cards for somebody. It's about helping people at the end of the day. Yeah, it really is. It's about touching other people's lives that touches you yeah. back. And I think you hit on a big point here. It's a really important point, Barry, about when you do this work and the, and the messages come through and you're working with people and the energy that it's really about acknowledging it. 
and mm -hmm. how what can you take away from it and what can you learn from it I find that when I do that when I I call them the lessons from the guides or, or any kind of interactions I have on this level whether it's with somebody else um, doing readings as well it's it's I I find that if I acknowledge it I mull over it I think about it and employ yeah. it in my life it's like you're taking spirit serious and, and not, yeah. not that they're not fun. They are fun. You guys know it. they have a sense of humor, but it's like you're taking this time serious. You know, even with when you're sharing time with people that are reading for you, you're reading for them, and you really look at the information and how can I apply this? It's like you're saying yes to spirit, so more can come to you. It's like mm -hmm. opening that channel more is what I've found. It is. It is. It's all about opening that doorway. No matter what we do, whether you know, as people know, I've done thousands of ghost hunts over the yeah. years. You know, even that, you know, using the board, using my mediumistic ability has made it so different for me. And I've watched over the years, you know, I started doing ghost hunts, what, probably, probably 20 years ago now, 20 years ago, you know, and it's developed more and more and more. Um, you know, it, it helps you open up. It helps you not be afraid anymore, you know, and realize that there's more to it or there's something more to it. And that's what I think is so important. You know it opens your eye up a little bit more and and you think actually you know let's keep going with this I, I always i always discuss it with people i always say once you get into working with the spirit world you develop i call it a greed but it's not a greed it's almost like an excitement you know you want more you want more i want to know more i want to learn more and i think that's really really healthy because there are so many routes that it will take you down things such as um, trans mediumship, physical mediumship, mm -hmm. you know, the art of, the art of um, transfiguration, communication with the spirit world when they're communicating with you direct. And all these sort of things is just phenomenal for people to see and experience. Um, I remember sitting in a seance once with a, with a very good friend of mine, you know, a physical seance, and he brought my mum through, through a direct voice. Okay. Now, my mum had been gone probably 12, 13 years by that point. And you know, you know when that feeling comes through and all I remember was hearing a voice and I kept going to the lady next to me who was a very good friend. I said, that's my mum. And she says, are you sure? I said, yeah, that's my mum. And you know, I, I was just overwhelmed. Even after all these years, I, it hit me and I was just overwhelmed. Oh, I can only imagine to hear that voice which you haven't heard in mm. years. Yeah, yeah, you're just overwhelmed by it. You really are. And it's things what they say to you as well. You know, um, I'm just thinking about. I've been, I've had opportunities to sit in sessions like that too, and you and I got a chance to discuss some of those things. Um, people often, I'll hear this. There's a fear when you start messing or talking to or experiencing the other dimensions or the spirit yeah. realm. What do you, what do you say to that? Is, is there, is there a, a fear to be had? Not at all. Not at all. I, I don't. I don't have a fear with it. You know, a lot of people will talk to you about negativity. They'll talk to you about, you know, the the the, the word of evil, things like that. And I always say to people, but why do you think it exists? Why do you think it exists? Where does it come from? You know. And then they start talking about movies and what they've seen on TV. And I say, we've well, got to put that to one side. You know, in all the years that I've done events, you know, there's certain things that have come through that I can make sense of. Very rare do I have something that's, that's uncomfortable, let me say that. You know, the spirit world come through to prove a point. They don't come through to, to bring you doom and gloom and to be feared of them. You know, and I think you've got to lose that fear factor because I, I'm a big believer that like attracts like. You know, you go out there with a negative attitude, you'll get negative things happen in your life. You know, value what you've got, look at what you've got and think, actually, you know, today I'm going to make a difference, not only to me, but to everybody else around me. Yeah, there's so much to be said about like attracts like, the energy we put out, the intentions we have when we come forth. I feel that too. And, um, you know, many people have their own fears and they're going to try to project those on you. And that's yeah. what I think you, a lot of people will find is that they, people tell them, oh, you shouldn't mess with a Ouija board. Oh, you shouldn't go to psychics. You shouldn't read cards. Um, and then there's many people that do believe in it too. But you you always get a naysayer every now and then. And my my point is always you know what feels right to you now you know doing cars may not be for everybody and maybe doing a Ouija board might not be for everybody but everybody you guys is from spirit 
And from where we came, we're going to go back to, again, you are spiritual beings. That's the important part to look at here. When we're dealing with these other spiritual realms and dimensions with other beings in them, they are spirit beings not unlike you. They just aren't in this corporeal existence. So yeah. there is nothing wrong with it with the communicating with who you are. These are part of, of your existence, too. That's, that's how I see it. Totally, totally, totally. And, you know, one of the things that I'm going to be introducing this year, we've started recording them now. Oh. It's online workshops for people. Oh, that so, sounds you know, great. Yeah. Okay. So, so you can literally attend, you know, there'll be three levels. There'll be an awareness and development and an advanced level. There'll be sort of like five sessions under each one, you know, and you can learn at your own pace. You know, you could do one of them. You can do all of them. But it's all about helping you out on a basic level in terms of your abilities. And what we'll do is that will move us on then in terms of like, you'll be able to come and do a live audience with me, a live session. Mm. We can talk about difficulties. You can send us emails, questions. And this is all part of us wanting to offer more to people because we get so many emails and not just from the UK, but from around the world where people go, where do I go to develop? Who do I go to de to develop? And it's very difficult for people because they don't know where to go. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's giving them that opportunity where they can come online, they can attend an online workshop with us. You know, you can have communication with us, access to us. And, you know, if there's something you're struggling with, we'll talk to you about it. We'll go through you with it, you know. And, and that's what we should be doing nowadays is, is working to support each other. That's wonderful. I'm so yeah. excited for this. Congratulations on that. And Thank you, you. I have to say, I saw again, I saw you in action. I'm a, I'm a testimony of how these people all got in the front of the room and we're all doing readings, you guys. And they were on, spot on. Not just mine. Mine was really good, but there was a few others. They were all good. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I can attest that, that you do a great job teaching people. Um, Thank you. So what else do you got coming up? You, you, do, you do so much. You're at so many events. You guys, oh, he's at an event every weekend. <laughs> Go check his schedule. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're always, always busy. And, you know, we're always looking for new venues. Uh, we're off on a trip next week to look at four new big theater venues. Um, last week, we're filling up the diary now for the rest of the year. Um, we're now taking bookings into 2021, which is good for us now. Wow. Um, our new article's just gone out in the Haunted magazine, if anybody knows of it. Or you oh, it. we love the Haunted guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my have gosh. A look, have a look. I'll just find it very quickly. Right you guys, here. it's Paul look. Stevenson and Andy Soar who put this magazine together. There you go. Look, there's me. Um, Fan. And this is great because Fantastic. this has been a whole new twist just to me, you see, because... I have very uh, strong links to Newstead Abbey, which is the home of the poet Lord Byron. Oh. Um, and my, my five times great grandfather was actually manservant to Lord Byron. I'll be darn. Yeah, and, and I'm actually one of the tour guides at Newstead Abbey. So for me, it's actually really fascinating being able to walk in my family's footsteps now. But if anybody wants to have a look, go and have a look on my Facebook. You can have a look at the article, but get the magazine because it's a brilliant, brilliant magazine. So it's called it's called um, Haunted Magazine. Okay, this is issue number twenty two. Okay. And you guys, the links will be below. It's a free magazine online. You can read it. This is they do a fantastic job. It's probably it's, yeah. it's UK's premier magazine, uh, digital magazine. They also sell it, and you can buy it as well. Yeah. Um, you have a physical copy. Congratulations on yeah. that. Yeah, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You know, and it, and it was great because. I wanted to come at it from a different angle, really, because we always write stories about hauntings and haunted oh, yeah. places uh -huh. and the paranormal and mediumship. And I thought, actually, you know what? I want people to see a different side of me now, where, where some of my roots were, really. And I love how the guys have called it, because one of the things I, I put in it was um, I'm staking a claim on my second home or something, calling it Newstead Abbey. Um, <laughs> and I do joke with some of the guides up there and I say, just think if, if Byron has left it to my family, you know, I'd be the owner of Newstead Abbey now. Um, so oh, how, how nice would that be? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's a stunning, stunning place. It really is. So, you know, it's great. It's great that people see a different side to me. We're, we're writing a book at the moment, which again, I need to finish, but that'll be out soon. Um, we're writing a small series of pocket handbooks as well now. Um, but all this is in action. All this is really moving very quick for me this year. You know, I'm putting a lot more time into writing, getting the word out there, getting the message out there. Um, unfortunately, that means I don't have a lot of slots for private readings, and we find that actually we get books up very, very quickly. Um, but, you know, we're keeping the readings going for people, as we always will. So we do 
readings, as, as you know, Karen, from anywhere across the world, really. We did last week, we had Australia, we had America, we had Europe, and obviously the UK. So, you know, we, we literally do readings everywhere. That's wonderful. Great, great work. Congratulations on all this exciting stuff that Thank you're doing, you. too. I'm really excited. And I was, I, we were talking about, when, when, when are you writing a book? I remember I was talking to you about that last fall, and yeah. I, I knew you were starting to work on one, so I'm really excited for that for you. Yeah, we have. We, we, we're just in the process of writing it now. Um, and like I say, there'll also be a set of what we call in pocket handbooks that come out with it as well. Very nice. Wow. So, uh, so yeah, lots happening this year for us. You know, I've really got to, uh, I, I've realized I've got to really knuckle down now and get things finished. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to put your focus, it's got laser, my, my guides call it laser focus. Get your laser focus going. <laughs> Well, so we've come to a place in the show where I always ask my guests, is there's a final thing you'd like to tell the audience, specifically to what we're talking about today, developing your abilities, your own psychic, em empathic, and intuitive abilities. What would you like to say as a final word? Do you know, all, all I want to say to anybody is anybody can do what I do. All you've got to do is believe in it, trust it. And, and get advice on it. You know, anybody can do this. And, and as I proved at that event, what you attended with me, we've got six people up there that have done nothing, absolutely mm -hmm. nothing. And, you know, a little information sometimes is better. You know, you don't have to give yards and yards of information. Giving a sentence or two means more to some people than giving them an hour's reading. So all I want you to do is believe that you can do it. Anybody can do this. Just try it and see what happens. But start with yourself, understand your ability, your own psychic link, and then we start developing your mediumship. Fantastic. So where can people find you now? And guys, all links will be below, whatever he shares. Yeah. yeah, have a look on our website, which is www.barryjohn, and make sure that's Barry with an IE. And then <laughs> have a look on Facebook, follow us on Facebook. Yeah. Again, look under Barry John, um, and you'll find us. Um, you know, we're always around, you know, I, I reply to the, the majority of messages myself because I like people to know that they can talk to me. Absolutely. He's very accessible. Well, yeah. it's, it's been an absolute joy. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I really enjoy your energy. Thank you so much, Barry. My pleasure. Thank you, Thank you so much, Karen. You're very welcome. Well, there you have it, you guys. Here's a gentleman who's really pushing his own boundaries, which he's done throughout his whole life, but he's taken it even further in helping others develop those abilities that he shares with the world. And as he said, you must start with a belief. And with the belief, you start looking within yourself and beginning to understand your own internal feelings, discerning those from others, and using that as your baseline. So now get out there and go explore this great, vast world that's out there for your taking. And until next time, this is Karen Dalma with Creative Visions TV, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.